We finished 12. Yeah, yep, yep. Especially now. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of it, we kind of raise the Word of God, we kind of match up to the Word of God, and a lot of it, like, like this, and some of it's just theory, you know, somebody making a guess on it. So, right. so how much spark do you put in stuff like that? It's kind of something you have to weigh on your own, right? You, you do. So um, the things that we match up with the Word and see that it's that that's obvious, yeah. that's what I put all my weight in. Uh, anything else I put no weight in. That, that, that's just me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll listen to the, the reasoning behind it, and I may even say that's very logical and makes you know a whole lot of sense, and it could be. Yeah. But until it happens, I really don't know on that one. And that, that's so much of it is that way. Um, I, I mean, I know that's not a, a great answer because, you know, Human nature is we, we, we want to know. <laughs> we, we need to, to figure things out and understand. Uh, unfortunately, and, and until uh, we're transformed from this flesh into uh, spiritual, we're not going to understand everything. I, I imagine having this uh, enlightenment when you know, the word says that when we see Jesus you know, and we're as he is that, that our understanding at that point is going to be opened up I, I, I get this imagination of when that happens like all kinds of things in the Bible that I thought that I just absolutely knew and you know being realized it's like oh man I had that wrong but that's you know that's not at all what I what I thought uh, because we we're just not there yet we're, we're imperfect, and we're not going to understand the perfection. And there's some things that are uh, going to be a mystery until that day. Uh, but I'm just amazed at how many how many uh, people are calling themselves prophets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just I just scratch my head saying, you know, I don't remember reading that anywhere in the Bible that it was going to be false teachers. But that that also lines up perfectly with. The warning we were given about the last days yeah. that that's going to increase yeah. more and more and more um, but <laughs> yeah, you know take take it for for what it's worth yeah. uh, and I I've, I've always taken this philosophy and I, and I tell this to other people um, the things that are the most important I and mean, it's all important don't get me wrong but uh, things that are salvation issues things that were as far as us to have a correct understanding of god and who he is uh, that's the whole reason god gave us the word uh, for us to know that to know what sin is uh, to know how to you know reconcile with him all of that 
Uh, if you understand those things, it sounds uh, wrong, I guess. The, the rest is fluff. <laughs> and I don't mean it like that. It's, everything else is gravy. Yeah, everything else is gravy. Yeah. There you go. That probably sounds better than fluff. <laughs> uh, you know, the, and you, you, you think about what, what God did to preserve this word and for us to have it. And what was the purpose of that? So that we wouldn't know him. So that we would know how to get to heaven. So the, those aspects of his word, you, you think that only doctors and scholars are going to understand that? That's, God didn't create it that way. It's so that everybody could just apply some good old God-given common sense and say, yep, this is how, how it is. And, you know, there, there's other things that I'd like to dig deep and get into, and, but um, that's just me. Uh, to try to proclaim certain things and, you know, this is how it is. I really get irritated when people do that. Uh, that's you can't you can't do that. If anything, it's the exact opposite. Even in you know, the New Testament, of Jesus is down time. Like the the scholars missed the whole point of him being there. The fisherman got it. Yeah, great. The scholars didn't. You know, like the I always think of Papa. Every time I can't remember where it's at. Uh, what Paul said that it, it, uh, um, the scripture makes. Uh, Makes wise the, the, the foolish wise, and it's I can't remember exactly. God uses yeah, you know God but, uses the, the the foolishness of the the gospel to confine yeah, the wise. Like my, you know, dad's dad, my papa, by any measurable educational standards, was I think he quit school on. Honestly, like keep grade. Like no, no, he, he he went to one day of high school. Yeah, like, <laughs> didn't, didn't like the teacher and didn't go back. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean the, 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 to watch him like write a letter or anything, it was real. Said not, not that he was dumb, but he was, he was simple. He was a farm boy from Southern Illinois. You know, just as a, but when he got into word and taught Sunday school and the stuff that he could put together and know, you know, I mean, I put him against any. You know, Moody Bible Institute, PhD, any day of the week. That's that's what the Holy Spirit does. He's the teacher. Yes. People who come back and even the Pharisees and Sadducees, Jesus told them they would be on the road of lightness because, you know, they had all kinds of education and degrees. Well, how many times did they try to bring up things you know, concerning the law to trip them up? And he would say, obviously, you don't understand or you, you err concerning the. Uh, the scriptures. I think the smarter that we are, I say we do, you know. <laughs> um, you try to lean on your own knowledge and understanding instead of, you know, being just. Well, I, I said if there's anything that I continually learn as I get older, it's how much I really don't know. <laughs> well, and the scripture says, "Don't let us know what we need to know and what we need to know." That's yep. right. Because what you know, his timing for our knowledge is not. You know, the world. Obviously. So the, even in what we're going to get ready to get into, and I, I say this on a lot of this, you know, sometimes he makes some statements as though they're fact, and he really doesn't have that authority to do that. I mean, it uh, makes sense many times what he is saying, and he could be right. I'm just not going to say, this is how it is. I, I, I don't know that. Uh, so there, there is a lot that is open to theory and that's that's part of the trouble with revelation and why a lot of people get into into trouble with that because they try to definitively assign certain things to symbolism here and there and it, it, it just doesn't work that way all the time yes sir um i, I just wanted to comment on there's, there's a rumble yeah. um, I'm not anti-scholar uh, or anti-Luke scholar. I love them both. In fact, whoever wrote this, I think was a scholar. No doubt. Definitely know these talking. Just the way it's presented. Yeah, you and, didn't just come up with this without doing some no. studying. And you know, the Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God. Yeah. And you know, when we look in the Bible, God used all types. He used the fishermen, but he also used like Nicodemus. He's a Pharisee. Paul, probably the most educated man in, in Israel. The same as Isaiah, a, a very scholarly work. And just recently, I was just doing a study on the rapture. 
for and against? Because I want to know both sides when I talk to a theologian. You know, I, I don't care what side they're on. I really don't. But when, when I study the rapture, a lot of people say, well, that was dispensationalism and it started in the 1800s with Darwin, for instance. And we'll go through it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. If it's true, can we go through church history and find it? So I found some scholarly papers where they did. And it started with the anti-Nicene fathers, people that knew the Apostle Paul. And it was there. They went through the Greek. Bang, bang, bang. So I don't discount scholars, and I don't discount blue collar. Uh, you know, the Lord says, love your neighbor. Okay. All these people are my neighbor, you know. And I just had an opportunity to talk with a Ger German theologian. And I says, well, I'm Armenian when it comes to um, uh, man's responsibility. And he says, Hugh, we are not too far apart. I was shocked because I thought he'd be <laughs> against me. Get out of here. No. Here, here's here's my my take towards a little bit with that there. Um, when the Bible specifically talks about, uh, here's the whole argument there. Well, rapture's not mentioned in the Bible. We've had this discussion in here. Uh, no, it's not. We're not saying that it is. We're just referring to an event that we've given a term called the rapture. And so you, you call it whatever you want to. I don't care. Um, as long as we're, we're describing that event. So when Scripture says that the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those of us that are alive and remain are going to be caught, then call that whatever you want to. It says that. I don't need to be reinforced by any doctor, any theologian, any fisherman, any... Uh, nobody else. That opinion matters. The Word said that. We're done. So, And when we approach God's Word that way, we're going to get so much further and deeper than any other avenue. Yeah, my thing is, I want to make sure I'm not mistaken. Because I've been trained in a lot of things that just aren't true. <laughs> well, God's word is true. And if you'll take it at face value, you won't, you won't go wrong. All right, let's jump in here. <clears throat> the Antichrist and the False Prophet, chapter 13. The emergence of the beast out of the sea. The Antichrist of Bible prophecy. <clears throat> Hold on here. Ooh, it's like my page is blurry now. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> Fingerprints all over me. Do you want this? <coughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Now I can, now I can see. <clears throat> uh, chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and his great authority. Oh, uh, see... This is one of those how to ask the question without in the statement <coughs> giving away what I'm looking for. What it, what? it says that and I stood, that's John, right? Yes. The yeah, that's 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 John, yes. The dragon is Satan giving the power and the seat and all that to the Antichrist. Uh well to the beast. This is now talking about the beast. So we have the Antichrist. Here, there's Satan always tries to mimic God. Right, you have false prophet, the Antichrist. And well, that's a false prophet. You have uh, Antichrist, the Beast, and Satan. There's your Trinity. There's, there's Satan's Trinity. You know, uh, rather than uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, he, you know, his counterfeit is to get intoxicated and babble. <laughs> Uh, he's, he, he has a counterfeit for every, tries to for everything that, that God has. So this this is his attempt at counterfeiting the, the Trinity of God. Antichrist, the beast, and Satan being part of that. Uh, so I, I was going to ask and say who is the beast, but 
I'm not meaning like an individual at so and so, and don't name people you know. <laughs> that's, that's not that's not what I meant. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll we'll stop this before it gets out of hand. Right? <laughs> I'm sure so and so is antichrist. <laughs> uh, but maybe what is would be a better way to to say it. The, the beast. So, Pastor, what is a how? Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't get to just skip over it. I sit down in this commentary and he's talking about how it's, it can be symbolic for like the characteristics of the nation. <laughs> yeah, I hope you didn't. Uh, a lengthy explanation, and we'll, 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 we'll go through that as well. So we know the Antichrist, or we will know the Antichrist when we get there. Is a man, right? I think the beast is a dragon, doesn't it? Well, that's, uh, uh, and it's been a while since I've uh, gone through this. I believe that that, that is a creation of Satan. Creation of Satan. Yeah. So, uh, it will we'll clarify as we, we go along with here, but I, I, I don't believe that it's a, a, a man such as the Antichrist is. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get clarification as we go along. I thought the dragon was Satan. The dragon is Satan, yes. I'm talking about the beast. The, the well, dragon and the beast are two different things. Right. The beast would be like the Antichrist in his system, isn't it? Is it like or his organization or government or whatever? It's, well, that's what... what that's... That's part of the question. Like I said, it's it's hard to, to figure out how to ask the question without getting into the. If it's a real like a real creature, um, but it says that he gave him his power, which okay, and his seat. I mean, what? I mean, you know, back in the Old Testament, people weren't freaked out when the animals were talking. So. Now, and here here is the place too where you know we've been talking all along. Uh, Always, always, always take, take literal unless it doesn't make sense to take literal. And there are, Revelation is one of those books that there's a lot of symbolism. <laughs> uh, so sometimes sorting that out, what is and what isn't, can be hard. And unfortunately, many times the people try to apply symbolism to everything within Revelation, and that's wrong. Yeah. You can't do that. So knowing when to and when not to is sort of the trick. You know, another interesting thing is the image of the beast. I've been thinking about it lately, and I think, I wonder if that's some kind of artificial intelligence critter that, you know, Satan embodies. Because then we're going to get to... Uh, I, huh? I think he appeared to die. Well, yeah, where he, he gives life to this. So with with that being said, then then that takes away the that it's a, a form of government. And a lot of people will apply that to the symbolism side of this. Although the, the horns and all of that, that, that does apply symbolic of uh, authority and uh, leaders, uh, kings usually. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll get into that. But it, it, this... this this one can be really hard to un unravel. Okay, so I, I created like, you know, the, the little cherubim, so that's cherubim. Cherubim, yeah. And then like, if you read the description of some of like the roosters and the angels, I mean, so it's really good. He's always trying to imitate. What's it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, let's start his uh, description here and then we'll, we'll break it down and sort it out as we go along. Uh, the last of the monarchs who will suppress Israel during the times of the Gentiles emerges on the scene of action in the first ten verses of the 13th division. This character is of central importance to the entirety of Daniel's 70th week. As a political ruler, his kingdom is composed out of the old Roman Empire. His main objective is to gain world supremacy. That's always been Satan's desire. At the very outset, he appears on the world stage of action as a great humanitarian, a philanthropist who manifests himself as having a great love for all mankind. He will, however, possess the power of deception, miracles, and lying wonders. 
The revelation of him in the 13th chapter unveils this notorious one for what he really is, the Antichrist of prophecy. It has been understood from some of the very best of manuscripts that the expression, I stood, should read, he stood. This change being affected by the dropping of one letter from the end of the verb is stop. I don't know if that's correct or not. If this be true, then the text refers to the dragon of chapter 13. I think it's John talking about himself. Uh, who stands on the sands and meets the one who is to receive his power and become the objective of deity worship. This has been Satan's intention and most sought after desire since iniquity was found in him. And now the exaltation of worship seems obvious to him in the percentage of the man of sin. So they're, they're, they're basically saying that uh, if a translation of one letter was changed, it changes the meaning of this. And that's possible. So again, here's one of those things. Which one's right? Well, guess what? We're not going to know for sure until it happens. <laughs> The quality of describing the beast out of the sea is expressed in a multiformity of symbolism. As John continues in vision, he sees the beast coming up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. A sea in symbolic passages represents peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. That this individual is earthly and comes up from mankind is proven by this revelation. Ten crowns are seen on the horns, which represent the power and dominion of each sovereign. That is, they speak of the individual kings or their kingdoms. The principal reason they are mentioned separately as each having a crown is in keeping with the words of the prophet Daniel. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. In symbolic language, when the term horn is employed, it speaks of a king or kingdom. A significant and more important factor is revealed in that these horns and crowns are connected to the beast. These are the kingdoms of the old Roman world who will give their full support and allegiance to the erection of the beast empire. Uh, so uh, we've discussed that as well. He's going to, through deception and whatever, he's going to gather up the support and the power of uh, the nations and they're going to get behind him. And uh, that's how he's going to, uh, I mean, it sounds like a uh, comic book thing, but that's how he's going to gain world dominance. <laughs> The beast out of the sea and the little horn of Daniel 7 8 are one in the self same character. The anti god of Bible prophecy, the Greek word therion, translated beast, means a wild beast as of the field. This is a different rendering than the translation of Zoa in the fourth division of Revelation, which means living creature or living one. The idea employed here in this particular setting is to reveal the beastly, uh, beastly notorious characteristics of the individual man. It was revealed to the prophet Daniel that three of the ten kingdoms are overthrown by the little horn. Some have contended that this disrupting will be brought about by the exercise of eloquent speaking. For this deceptive one in his original appearance is that of a silver-tongued orator. It is more probable that even though he comes in the pretense of peace, that force and the threat of war perhaps will be the means employed to overcome those nations who oppose the objectives of this ambitious one. At any rate, the devouring will be of such magnitude that the remaining kingdoms will become subjective and submit to him without further delay. The seven heads of the beast are said to have, have engraved upon them the name of blasphemy. Uh, this impious utterance ascribed to the seven-headed beast is the insidious act of cursing and reviling the holy name of God or sacred things. So uh, at this point, not that it hasn't already started, he is really going to be against the, the church, any whatever uh, form of religion is present here at this time. Uh, he's just going to be tearing down anything to do with God whatsoever. Not, not that what is established at this time will have any true reference of God to begin with, uh, but whatever attempt there is, he's really going to uh, come, come against it in uh, full force. Let's see. This diabolical one, is that what it is? Yeah. This diabolical one will assume upon himself the rights and qualities of God, but associated with true godly worship. Uh, oh, sorry, skipped a 
line there. But with irreverent behavior will still be in direct opposition toward anything held sacred or associated with true godly worship. With this initiative uh, ceremonial procedure admitted into a most depraved society, the Antichrist will continue until the indignation be accomplished. Uh, that is, until the God of heaven intervenes at the second return of Christ. The seven heads set forth the entire course of onward movement composing the installation and completion of the time of the Gentiles. That particular period of time when the Israelites are suppressed by the Gentile nations. This began with their bondage down in Egypt and will finally consummate with the beast empire during Great Tribulation. Satanic genius has successfully masterminded the continuous violence and blasphemous percussion upon Israel during each of these world powers. The world kingdoms are seven, depicted by the seven-headed beast, namely, and again, uh, I think he is uh, establishing this uh, throughout Israel's history. Okay, that's where he's going with this. Uh, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and those have all happened, and the one to come is the revived Rome. The beast out of the sea will become the leader of the seven. The ten horns are kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but are destined to receive power as kings one hour with the beast. This formation of the beast empire composed of the ten kingdoms will rule in independently and collectively in the sense of infant amalgamation and structure the first three and a half years as the seventh head. So the, the seven heads aren't uh, indicating all that are present. They're ones that have been in existence throughout history, which the seventh and final head being the one uh, that's going to be in power during this time. Uh, it is understood from the revelation that when the Antichrist gains complete control, his kingdom will be termed uh, the eighth and is one of the seven. The beast from the earth and the beast from the bottomless pit are to be contrasted in that the beast from the earth is an earthling, a man. And the beast from the pit is a satanic prince who ruled one of the seven kingdoms in times past. That is why it can be properly said of him, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in chapter 17. It is this individual who gathers together the kings of the earth with their armies to make war against Christ in the conflict of Armageddon. Uh, that doesn't happen until chapter 19. A further description of the beast is given. The beast itself was likened to a leopard with the feet of a bear, the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. In the seventh edition of Daniel, the, uh, the prophet, speaking in relation to world empires, has this to say. The first beast was like a lion, the second like a bear, the third like a leopard, and the fourth beast was dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. Daniel continues to describe the fourth beast, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. As one can readily see, the selection of these anim animals given to the Apostle John are in conformity with the, uh, and correspond to the revelation recorded by the prophet of old. A lion bears the image to Babylon. The bear refers to Medo-Persia. The leopard refers to the Greek Empire. The fourth beast, according to Daniel, was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stomped the residue with his feet. In Revelation, mention is made of the fourth beast again in reference to having all the elements and characteristics of the Greek, Medo-Persian, and Babylonian empires. A most interesting observation is the breaking down of monarchy power within each of the successive empires. This disparagement of individual power is revealed in the prophetic utterances in Daniel, the second division. For example, the Babylonian empire was ruled and governmentally controlled by the supreme power of the monarchy. The Medo-Persia was a dual or two-unit empire, and Greece, upon uh, the death of Alexander, was divided among four of his own generals, while the fragments of the old Roman Empire are those of the ten horns upon the beast. 
This revived Roman Empire emerges during Great Tribulation, having all the characteristics and distinguishing features of the lion, bear, leopard, and beast empires. Also, the degeneration of world kingdoms is seen in the diminishing value of the metals, uh, gold, silver, brass, iron, and iron mixed with miry clay. As has previously been stated, each of these kingdoms has been ruled by an unseen spirit being, uh, unseen spirit being. However, the beast from the sea receives power directly from the dragon, the devil himself. Uh, so there's uh, no doubt that each of these former kingdoms that has been mentioned were uh, satanically influenced uh, for sure. But the one that comes about of the old Roman Empire, the revised Roman Empire, during the tribulation period is not just going to be Influence that's going to be directly satanic ran. Yes, sir, I don't understand that last statement. Uh, diminishing value of the metals, gold, silver, brass, iron, uh, with the miry clay. He's talking about Daniel on the toes. And, uh, uh, he, he's saying that, that during the during this time, that that the value of those precious metals are they're going to be going down. So the well, thing, things are good. brass, iron, and those those are just common metals. Right, iron. gold, gold, silver, and then the, the reference of the brass and the iron and the iron mixed with the miry clay is what he's saying is reference to to that. You know, again, whether to the the correctness of that, we'll we'll see. I mean, it uh, you know, gold always continues to yeah. go up, 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 and I think when he's applying, and I, I, I can see that happening, that things are going to get so bad that things like that are going to lose their value. They're not going to, they're not going to have the value that they have now. They're going to deteriorate. I, I, I think from the statements that are made, and I forget which chapter of Revelation that it's, it's in right offhand, uh, but talking about uh, when the city is destroyed and uh, the merchants around the world, you know, they, uh, you know, they're mourning over the, the destruction because you know, they're making profit off of it. And they, they, if I remember right, the description there talks about that it was a place where uh, the souls of men were bought and sold. So the things that we're seeing now, they try to keep it hidden, but human trafficking is a major, yeah. major problem and an issue. And, you know, of course, the the rich elite, you know, they're uh, paying people to suppress that because they want people to know about that. Well, whatever is going on now is nothing. That is, so... That statement about you know silver and gold and those things not being worth anything, I think what's going to be the the commodity and the trade is going to be slavery. <clears throat> uh, literally, will be selling people for God only really knows what. You think about it too. During that time, there's not a lot. Not a lot of people are going to have anything. They'll be willingly. Yep. I think. Yep. I think I think people will be the commodity of the time. I really do. And to a certain extent, it's happening right now in China. There's uh, in medical facilities, they take prisoners, extract their organs, and they walk in the trash and they go. So, and it's good. It's a profitable thing because rich people, if you need a liver, I know where to get some. Yep. You know. Yeah. I so said there, there's stuff happening that. <laughs> People who really have, you know, not, not that I'm anybody that has any insight to anything, uh, but I guarantee you that even what I come up with in my own mind, that there's probably so much more going on that I wouldn't even <coughs> imagine that this is happening in the world. It is just annoying in my spirit that we don't have a clue. We exactly. The destruction and the devastation right now. The evil yeah. that is taking place in the world right now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have facts or you know, first-hand knowledge, but I just, I just, I, I, I just know it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. I just know it. We get the 
like somebody leaking something. Yeah, lying. just a little piece. Yeah. Yeah, all, all that stuff, because it's been in the news, everybody knows about you know, Epstein's Island. I, I guarantee you that is even the tip of the iceberg. You're right. Not even the tip of the iceberg. That's just, that's just one that accidentally got loose. Yep. Yep. Where it talks about the whole little horn coming out of the big horn and like the Roman Empire or whatever your I've heard it said that that could be referring to the, the Catholic Church how it came it's not of the like the Roman Catholic like the Vatican and you know Rome it's like its own separate entity Catholic Church is rife with Luciferianism and Satanism and I don't, I don't People think that that. Worship the Pope like he's God anyway. And right, and 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 I do think that because of that, that uh, whether it's called that or not, that the world religion of this day is going to be out of that. You know, uh, I don't think that they'll call it you know Catholicism or whatever because for everybody to join and take ownership of it, you know, nobody's going to want to let somebody else have. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, that's just how egos work. So they'll come up with a new name for it so that everybody will get on board. But yeah, ultimately, I, I, I do think that that's what that is, the, the, the end time world religion. Uh, but the horns are always talking about uh, a king or, or, or kingdom. And the uh, Catholic Church or any church that world religion is not going to have that power at this time. They're going to have it entering into, or they'll have it within the tribulation, and, and the Antichrist is going to join with them in order to get gain that influence and that control. But as soon as he gets what he wants, he's going to start killing. Them. He'll, he'll, whatever the world religion is, then because if it has any, even though it's as you know fake as whatever, just the fact that it has any thought about God at all. I mean, he's, he's all about gaining you know, the, the, the praise and, and for himself. So anything that has any reference or connection to God, as false as it is, he's going to wipe him out. That's, that's, that, that, that horn then is, is not going to be a religious institution. It'll it'll be an individual. I say I don't, hear, I don't always hear certain pitches. I mean, like I hear a whining. Okay. All right. It's just a Yeah. Yeah. I just. That's a nice strong. I'm looking at it as I get a free trip wash. <laughs> yeah, as long as long as it's not hail, I don't need I don't need beans with it. Huh? Yeah, right. Uh, all right, if nothing else. Okay, here. so the little one that's a king, and somebody coming out of the kingdom is going to rise up. Like out of those other kingdoms, yes, yes, correct. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So, so the beast, everything we just read, one, two, the beast really established that's just a power, person, and a person in power. Person in power. Yes. It's not the end. It's not what? Not the end. No, the Antichrist is separate from the beast. Correct. Okay, so the beast is the person, not fighting. That's that, that's where, where I'm drawn here. Well, we're gonna we're gonna hear more. Um, yeah. Well, 
we'll, we'll draw our full conclusion as we, because there's, there's still more concerning the beast. So, real quick, just from that first verse, right there. It says, and I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. Mm -hmm. We know Satan can't raise the dead. That's something only God can do. So, kind of going on the lines of what you were saying, I can see everybody how they're so advanced with AI that they can make it appear as if it's this is what had happened and who it was and. They even got drugs that can like knock you out, but you're still alive. Like people with your bed. Well, they, they can create a whole so scene or whatever. Okay, so that's what I was asking back there if the beast was a man. I thought it was the Antichrist, but that's oh, the it, It's not the Antichrist, I can tell you that. Right. Then I thought that white people were saying it was like a real beast. I always understood to be okay when he had a fatal wound, but it was like this time around reading it, it was like as it were wounded to death. Yeah, and I don't know if that's a you know statement as it were, meaning a this is how it was, <laughs> or as it appeared. Right. I don't know. I'm, I'm... Well, Satan can't. Right. No, he doesn't have the power of life and death. Exactly. Right. That's why I said I can see where it says, as it were, wounded to death. But again, he's full of deception. Yeah. But we also know, too, that uh, and God's going to allow us, people are going to you know, be deceived by it. And that's mm -hmm. part of the, you know, the, the delusion that God's letting them have that uh, he's going to perform miracles. Mm -hmm. And people are going to flock to him as God simply because of the miracles. Right. So he, he does have some power. Yeah, I have no doubt that he has some power, but again, it's that life and death. Right. He does not yeah, have no, the power right. to bring somebody back to life. Right. I, I, I yeah. get that one too. All right, let's see what he's got to say here. It says, the general subject of verse 3, that is, one of the heads of the beast having received a fatal wound, has had many opinions uh -huh, and widespread interpretations. Many have thought this event to be an apparent parallelism to the lamb slain in Revelation 5-6, an actual mimicry of the death and resurrection of our Lord. Uh, I mean, I could, I, I could see Satan being involved in that for sure. In effort to identify the Antichrist, this particular school of thought has advanced many historical persons, such as uh, Nimrod, Antiochus, Epiphanes, Nero, Judas Iscariot. Yeah, I don't need to read them all. Um, in modern contemporary times, such personages as Mussolini, Hitler, Stalin, Kennedy, etc. have been advanced. The process used to base such a belief upon in which one could return from the dead and become the man of sin is none other than that of reincarnation. Adherents of this teaching believe that when the Antichrist is to be revealed, a departed human soul from the past will become embodied into a selected individual at birth and then grow to full maturity. So he's just stating this is what's an opinion someone has. This is not what he's saying. Thus he will become the Antichrist of Bible prophecy and in the middle of the week be slain by an assassin. Further, his body will then lie in state for three days. Then Satan at the appointed time will incarnate himself into this man, becoming the immortal one. The immortality of this resurrected one is supposedly proven further in the fact that both the beast and the false prophet are cast alive into the eternal flames. Many deny the embodiment at birth theory, insisting that some soul from the past enters the body of the beastly man at the same at the time he is wounded to death. At any rate, the entire thought is erroneous. For the Christian faith entirely denies the doctrine of reincarnation. Amen. A most significant fact which some interpreters have overlooked is that only one of the seven heads is wounded to death and not the beast itself. The heads have already been identified as world empires or the unseen spirit who controlled them. This resurrection of one of the empires of the past seemingly has reference to that of Rome. 
because it is the pagan Roman Empire which will come uh, prize the kingdom of Antichrist in the last days of the Gentiles. However, the beast whose deadly wound was healed relates to a spirit power who ruled over one of the preceding world kingdoms. Returning from the abyss, this satanic prince whose deadly wound was healed will influence the Antichrist as he in times past controlled the leader of an ancient kingdom. The beast is worshipped and praised for the uniting of these European countries. A common market or communalism of commonwealths is a system of government which these countries have sought after for centuries. When the old Roman kingdom fell, she fragmented, becoming detached from the whole. The beast from the sea will have political ambitions and is eagerly, eagerly desirous of obtaining power, fame, superiority, and distinction. With boldness and readiness, this adventurous spirited man will set forth the enterprise of amalgamating the United European or Old Roman Kingdom. Sounds like they're uh, on a roll trying to get that going now, aren't they? When the solidification is complete, the world will stand in astonishment, bestowing much honor upon the person responsible for such an, accom for such an accomplishment. Um, so here, here's where we're going to say once again that in these, until it happens, I, I don't know for sure. Um, I see he, his claim is that it's uh, that that's a world power that is has, either will be or has been destroyed and it is going to be reestablished. Um, I can see that because of what the horns represent, kingdoms, and kings, and uh, I, I I can accept that symbolism. Again, for me to say, yep, that's it, that's a fact. I'm not going to go that far. Well, I just, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? You know, it, it does say one of the heads. One of the heads. Yeah. Right. Not the beast himself. Right. Correct. So that then, uh, I think, probably answers mm -hmm. how you were approaching it as well. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, that thing's still going on, man. I'm just weather alert. Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just a sort of weather alert. It will go off every five minutes until it's oh, okay. over. To their work, uh, it also states that the, and all the world, you know, wandered after the beast. You know, it, somebody that was able to accomplish you know, what he's saying here to reestablish, the, they, they'd be all over that. Oh man, look how! I, I think that's part of how the Antichrist is going to get his power as well. You know, when the rapture takes place and all the Christians are gone and the things that that take place, he's so somehow he's going to come in with explanation and you know be able to bring everybody together and overlook what just happened, uh, and they're going to say, "Hey, yeah, this, this guy's great." Maybe by so important on the Bible that Jesus tells us that when they start talking about these things, you know, they will come, they go home there and they say, "Hey, look, Jesus over here, look." Yeah, no, yep. Yep. So when he's talking about the heads, you're saying he's talking about one of the kingdoms. Yes. Yes, correct. Yeah, I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And see, I've never heard of that before. Every time I've heard this, I've always pictured it as the beast. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I. It, it's. A lot of time in between when uh, you do these, and then you know, I remember having this very discussion previously when it got to this point too, because that's a, a lot of people view it the same way. Uh, I'm trying to see here, I don't know if I want to. 
coming up in the church at the time that I did or like your first you know exposure to revelation it was like the left behind the book series you realize how long <laughs> and they're way off on a lot of stuff but it's not at all because yep. like in there it's like the antichrist gets shot in the head and then he gets less yeah it's like oh look you know yes yeah. yeah that's that's not a scripture yeah, yeah. That's uh, there's a lot of uh, everyone under 13 gets raptured. They're all no more kids. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right, I think I'll go ahead and stop there rather than start to get into the next few parts. Mark your pages there. 13 and 4 is where we will pick up next time. <laughs> the rain don't sound like it's letting up any either. <laughs> <laughs>